The Thuhlui Imfolozi Park in KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa is home to over 96 species of mammals, including giraffes, rhinoceros, elephants, lions and African buffaloes. Bovine tuberculosis is endemic in the park and endangers conservation of the species. Through surveys we did in the early 90s, um, which were provoked or, uh, by the uh, discovery of, of tuberculosis in one or two buffalo, we then started specifically targeting herds. We very quickly realised that buffalo were the primary maintenance host of the disease within the park, and hence the reason for targeting them. We've got a very proud history of rhino conservation. We were worried about the disease spreading into the rhino populations and having restrictions imposed on, in terms of movement of these animals. And in the early years we were already seeing a negative impact on our lion population. So we had various reasons for um, targeting buffalo and trying to control the disease and of course the other aspect of it is that we had a responsibility to our neighbours. Although cattle would have introduced the, the, the disease initially, uh, we didn't want the reverse to occur and we're finding that buffalo are now infecting cattle that were grazing along our boundaries. The testing that we do for um, screening for tuberculosis in the buffalo herd is that each year uh, during our winter, the cooler part of the year, um, the animals are tested in a different part of the park. Since there's so many buffalo, you really can't test them all each year. They are um, captured in a mass capture, kind of a funnel system. Um, they're held in our BOMAs and then they're actually immobilized so that we can do the skin testing and also take blood tests. Similar to cattle, the first type of screening that you do for TB is usually the skin test. However, we know that that is not always the most optimal way of detecting um, TB in infected animals. So by using a more sensitive test, um, such as a blood-based test like the Bovagam, we can pick up additional infected animals. It also is especially useful in wildlife where we have to mobilize the animals with drugs in order to get um, the skin test both injected and read, which increases the cost and um, the stress on the animals and the people involved. So we really prefer if we can have a good sensitive blood-based test to be able to screen our buffalo. After the blood sample is taken, the tubes are numbered and assembled. The samples are then taken to a basic ELISA testing lab in the park. So based on these ELISA results, we will identify all animals that showed a test reaction. They will be, they will be moved to the abattoir camp where they will be slaughtered and then we'll do post-mortem examinations on them, collecting tissue and gross pathology on the tissues for mycobacterial culture and that's the step where we used, um, where we used uh, PCR to try and identify the pre for the presence of, DNA, of MTBC DNA. And, um, and then that, that saves a lot of time because it, conventionally culture takes eight weeks before we can get a proper result. After the testing, we will separate the positive animals from the negative animals. The negative animals will get released back into the park. The positive animals will be culled um, and, they, and the, the carcasses will be processed through an abattoir. The meat is then um, inspected by ourselves and then distributed to the local communities at a very reasonable cost. The significance of the TB program in this park is that, one, it's very unique. In other areas of South Africa, there are no ongoing long-term TB surveillance programs in wildlife. Um, in the Shishlui Amphalosi, this has been going on for years, and they feel that the testing has been making a difference in keeping the prevalence of infection down in the buffalo. We know that the buffalo are maintenance hosts, and because they can maintain the infection, not only can they spread it between themselves, but it can also spill over to other wildlife species like lions, um, wild dogs, which are critically endangered, but at interfaces such as surrounding the park into cattle, in the communities and even potentially then into humans. 
So it's a very significant program in terms of One Health and looking at more than just the health of the buffalo.